That's a good question. Add in. This is a bit con okay. Yeah, go ahead. I remember the in the in the American like in the in the East Coast. Yeah, in America, I heard a fish name blue bluegill. Bluegills, you bet. Yeah. So the gill this this guy have the bluegill. Oh. Yep. I'll show you a picture. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, bluegills are delicious. Uh, uh -huh. I'll show you a picture. Yeah, bluegills. So they're also very fun. Uh, there are if you like fishing, bluegills are uh, lots of fun. So we'll go to images here, and this is the idea. The it's not really blue to be honest, but the other part is very yellow. It's very golden. So relatively, this section here looks blue, and that's where it is. It's right above the the fin. And uh, you can see up here, it really looks blue, but that's not really true. It's just this is really orange and yellow, and this looks blue. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. In Japan, also similar uh, name of fish, uh, uh, nodoguro, nodoguro, maybe. And it does. Do you eat them? Do you fry them? And uh, that that maybe yeah. Uh, anything, uh, any cooking is a bit probably, the, but dried one or ah, you, yeah, you yeah. dry them too. Wow, this yeah. is a, uh -huh. this is okay. Usually the bluegill is about this size. This is a typical mm -hmm. size, uh, but this guy caught a huge one. My goodness, I've never seen one that big. <gasps> mm -hmm. Oh, I'm jealous. Wow. Yeah. Oh, now I'm hungry. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> Ice fishing. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god. Sorry, that's uh, that's that's uh, anyway, sorry guys. <laughs> is it a lake or river? Are they these fish live in that lake uh, or river? Uh, usually a lake. I guess they might live in a river, but the only blue I've done lots of bluegill fishing and it's always on a lake. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for DDM two sixty seven? Thank you very much, Bertha. Um, I have to uh, write that down someplace. Hold on a second. DDM258. Actually, I'll email it to myself because I will forget. Daily Dictation Members, W Practice, and DDM258. And to perf. You want me to just put that up in perf, right? Um, yeah, I'll do it that. Will be great. And also, here there are two students that they hang out with Miguel, and they say they have problems with the W sound. Got it. I don't, I don't want to say their name because I don't want to embarrass them. I understand. Uh, so yeah, if if anybody has a problem with the W pronunciation, I will upload a video that I created. I'll put it in perf and in DDM two seventy. Uh, so or 271, whatever we're studying now. Uh, I'll do that after the hangout, so you guys can uh, look at that video and practice. Okay, Umesh, go ahead. I had a yeah, I had a problem with the V and W. So now I I you know worked on it. It's it uh, looks uh, okay to me. You can tell me like very and white. Yeah, it's it's. Okay. Uh, but let's see. Earlier, like the very and white, it was like that. It's not very and white. Yeah. Let me get a sentence. Hold on a second. Okay. This is a really killer sentence. I was wary of the very wide vibrating Wi-Fi machine. Try that. Okay. I was wary of very wide vibrating Wi-Fi machine. Okay. So your W is fine. Uh, your R is not so good, and the V needs lots of work. Okay? Yeah. So right. let me... So for right now, I'll just give a quick V lesson. These are your upper lip 
and this is your lower lip, okay? When we do the V pronunciation, I want your teeth, your upper teeth to touch here. So V, it's on the inside, victory. Try this, very. Very. Good, and we need lots of vibration, very. Very. Okay, and it needs more air, very. Very. Okay, this is terrible uh, because I need my camera and my camera's not working. Uh, so um, I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna find another V video and if I can't find a good one, I'm gonna send you that or I'll make a V video for you, okay? Okay. okay. Let's go back to this one though. Wary. Wary. Good, but don't let the tongue touch when you do the R. Let's try it again. Wary. Wary. Get very good. That was really good. Let's make it stronger. Wary. Wary. I like it. Uh, and uh, wary. Yeah. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'll do another video on W's and R's. Actually, that video that uh, Bertha was talking about might be perfect. So let me upload that video, and I'm going to look for a V video for you too, okay? Okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. this is what we need to uh, – in this particular stuff, guys. Oh, what's going on here? What's wrong? Cancel. New. Oh, I'm having a problem. Uh, in this particular uh, stuff, DDM Live, I really want your questions because that gives me good homework on things that I can do. Okay, so can I ask one more question? Absolutely. Okay, so the, the, um, in my previous Hangout session, uh, you told me about uh, the my L sound, right? So it should be L, right? Not Light L, L, right? Yeah. So I got confused, like, uh, okay. Like, okay, but when I want to say little, I get confused. So, little, so the second L, right, and or like split. I still want it to be a light L. So that I, I like, I couldn't, you know, bring my tongue to. <laughs> okay. That is very really tough for me. So little. little and, so little with light L's is tough, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, once again, Umesh, uh, mm -hmm. tonight I will make a short video about this too, light with little L's. And uh, and I because this is something you guys need to see. I, I can explain it, but it's much mm -hmm. better if I show you in a video. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll make these videos for you tonight. Because I got the when I, when uh, you told me about then I started focusing on my L and uh, I noticed that the little and the split I have I got those two words that uh, it was challenging for me. Little and what? Split. S P L I T. Uh, little and split. Okay. Right. Got it. So little and split. Yeah, split is much easier, and same thing with little. Now, once again, when it comes to words like split uh, and little, especially the second L, and that's what Umesh is talking about, the second L, it is uh, this L and this L. It is much easier to say it with a dark L, much easier with a dark L, that's for sure. But yeah. people who have an L problem, it's much easier to fix it if they concentrate on a light L. So I'll do my best in a, in a video for you, okay? Okay, thank you. You bet. Go ahead, Berta. Could you please say again the words split and little? Yeah, they're right here. Split and little. Split and little. Yeah, you see in a split, I can't uh, tell the dark L. It sounds like a light L. Okay, so I'm right now I'm using a light L. So let me use a dark L. Oh, okay. So this is a dark L. Split, split, split. Oh, okay. This and is a light L. Split, split, split. Split, split. Split. Yeah, that sounded good. All right. Little. 
Okay, so little, I'll, this, once again, I'll do it on a video, guys, and I'll do light and dark so you can hear the difference. Hey, uh, Shane. Yes. But um, the L at the beginning is always light, right? Only no, not, no, unfortunately, not always. Um, it's easier. This one, this one is definitely more easy as a light L, and this is yeah. easy as a dark L. That's for sure. But not always. Some people are different. You know, people are are always a little different. Right now, I just said little with dark L. Little, little, little. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go to DDM 269. DDM 269. I'll go back to DDM 268 in a minute. DDM 269 was take off your shoes or clean my carpet, your choice. Kind of a funny topic. In uh, many countries, people absolutely take their shoes off when they go in the house. But it's very common, especially in America, to leave the shoes on. And that, I know, for some people, sounds horrible. But it's actually very common. I want to talk about the title really quick because I like this grammar structure. Shrewd is an adjective. Shoe is a verb. Er is a noun suffix. So I'll just put noun suffix. We don't have the lesson. Ah, thank you, thank you. We thank don't you. have a sleep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so once again, shrewd is an adjective. I'll make this one there color. Uh, shoe is a verb. Change the color. Er is a noun suffix. And I'll explain that in a second. And then should is actually what we call a past participle. Uh, and a past participle is basically the same thing as an adjective. What color should I use? I'll use that color. Uh, so I'll talk about this real quickly. Uh, shrewd means very smart, very clever. Shoe as a verb means go away, to shoe, to push away. Er can be a person or a machine. A baseball player is a person. A record player is a machine. And shoed is somebody who is wearing shoes. So shrewd shoers of the shoed, smart people who shoe away people who wear shoes. It's just kind of a funny uh, sentence. I think Americans would thought, think of it very clever, but ESL students might might say, what the heck is that? <laughs> so I just wanted to explain this again. It's uh, just kind of funny. Uh, the story was, once again, taking your shoes off in the home. And not too bad. The vocabulary was not too bad. Everybody basically understood the story which was pretty good. Questions on DDM 269? Anything? The first question. Yes. Uh, I'm a little confused uh, with standstill. Mm, yeah. Well, nice. because I thought the stand uh, was the shoe thing, the shoe bank. Can that be a stand shoe? Ah, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, I see what you're talking about. So we have something called an umbrella stand. Yeah. And let me show you a picture. Hold on a second. I'm going to bring a picture. Yeah, I know the picture of the umbrella. Uh, but for other people, yeah. too. Um, hold on a second. Umbrella stand. Um, so copy. So an umbrella stand is basically this, and you'll find it right by your door, you, a place you put umbrellas. Uh, shoe stand, it's not, and it sounds good. We could say like a newspaper stand, a newspaper stand. That's a place where you put newspapers and they sell newspapers. So maybe a, a shoe stand uh, is another word for standstill. No, it's a great idea, but no. Do we say shoe stand? If somebody said shoe stand, I would think a place uh, that sells shoes on the street, like a newspaper stand or a oh. shoe shine stand. That's what I would think. Yeah. Um, 
how about the umbrella? You don't uh, uh, an umbrella stand. Umbrella stand, we really think of this, not a place on the street. It's possible, uh, especially if you are selling umbrellas on the street, you would say, I have an umbrella stand. Uh, but also in your house, you might have, I actually in my house, I do have an umbrella stand, even though I live in the desert. <laughs> yeah, my umbrella stand is in my car. In your car? <laughs> yeah, I just put it there and never use it. My umbrella stand is uh, by my door. <laughs> I see. Oh, um, then is, um, stand still is, well, I saw the explanation video and actually you. Say you got it, it right? Uh, yeah. Yep. So that's what that means. Very good, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Don't be shy. More questions? Too easy. I thought so. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Mihao. Okay, in America, when we say stall, um, we think of two things. Uh, we think of a, a barn or a bathroom, okay? So, uh, no, I, once again, in America, that's what, so let's, I'm, I'm just going to take you to Google, and uh, let's just type stall. This is image search, and we're going to type stall. And, okay, so here, the first thing we see is a horse stall. This is the idea. Um, and this, once again, this is a market stall. Uh, right. I have a feeling this might be a little British English, though. Let's go to the page. Um, Torquay College. Where is, ah, this is in Australia. Yeah, it's Australian. Um, so it's not wrong. Uh, we do say that, but I think it might be British English or, in this case, Torquay College, which is in Australia. Yeah, it's in Australia. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say it's not wrong, but not common. Okay? Okay, now you know what, though? Let me take that back. Um, in America, we have fairs or carnivals, uh, F-A-I-R or carnival. This is the UK also. Uh, and we do call these game places, places where you play games, we do call them stalls. Uh, so in that case, we do say stall. But especially in America, barn. We think of a barn. Yep. This is uh, Mike, uh, Mihao's question was really good. People say, you know, oh, American English, British English, it doesn't matter. Just do what you want to study. Just have fun. That's not, unfortunately, that's not really true because the daily vocabulary in the UK and America is actually quite different. In America, we say umbrella. But in the UK, they don't. Does anybody know what they say? No. Miha? How do you? I thought umbrella, but now I'm confused. They say brawly. Brawl. They also say bumper shoot. <laughs> so I'm going to. I think I spelled Brawley wrong. Uh, let me double check the spelling of Brawley. I don't even know. Damn British English. Uh, maybe there's ah with no. Okay, there you go. Brawley. Yeah, there we go. So B R O L L Y. Brawley is uh, British English once again for an umbrella. That's what they say in America. We say umbrella. In the UK, they say Brawley. Everybody knows. Uh, elevator. In America, we say elevator. What do they say in the UK? Lift. Bingo. That's right. They say lift. L -I -F -T. lift. <laughs> oh, I have a question about the umbrella. So yeah. in the U.S., because uh, Mexico has two names. So in, uh, how about in the U.S.? I only know for umbrella. Oh, me too. In the U.S., uh, 
we say, yeah, um, umbrella. Sometimes they say parasol, but when they say parasol, they usually mean a beach umbrella. Okay. And when we just say umbrella, we think of uh, rain. And we could also say a yeah, sun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a yeah. sun umbrella is also possible. But, and they'll, they'll even call that a sun umbrella. Yeah, yeah. In Mexico, we call it uh, and for sun, one name, and for the rain, other name. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Umbrella. Elevator, uh, once again for Nabil, is lift. There are many, 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 many different words for daily English. That's why when people, I, I, I hear lots of teachers on YouTube say, you know, oh, don't worry, British, American, it's the same. It really isn't in daily English. Um, it really unfortunately isn't. And British people know American English. They know umbrella. They know elevator. But Americans don't know brawly. And uh, sometimes some Americans don't know lift either. So uh, I'll give you one more good example. In America, we say drugstore. What do they say in the UK? Medical store. They say chemist. Medical Chemist shop, okay. Yes. What about, what's this? Zebra crossing. Pedestrian crossing. Good. Pedestrian crossing. But that's that's technical English. We just say crosswalk. In American English, crosswalk. Um, oh, there's so many. Truck in America, what do they say in the UK? <laughs> Are you British? Glory. Uh, I, I was learning English in Poland, so you know, we, we, are, we are in that part of, of, of the world which is more influenced by British English, right? That's right, that's right. So this is a great example. Every British person knows crosswalk, they know truck, they know drugstore, but very few Americans know chemist or zebra crossing or lorry. Um, so that's why... Uh, Sorry to the Queen of England, but I do push American English. <laughs> <laughs> How about Canadian with American? Similar. Very similar. Canadian English and American English is very similar. Uh, yeah, I would say, gosh, a couple of differences. In Canada, in Canada they say duvet. Does anybody know what duvet is in English, American English? No. Not me. Umesh? No, not me. No? We say comforter, but does anybody know what a comforter is? Blanket, especially a heavy blanket. So in Canada, they say duvet, uh, which is British English, too, um, and it, I, I think it comes from France. I don't know. Uh, but in America, we say comforter or blanket. Uh, we even say quilt, but a quilt is actually a little bit different, but yeah. It's quite different. Yeah, like the, in India also we, we read uh, British English. So initially when I came here, uh, I had uh, so much problem. Like I was saying, where is the lift? Not lift. <laughs> <laughs> and people didn't understand, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. I, I had a, I, like, then I started, uh, like one of the example is uh, the check and bill, right? Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> So you can say, check, please. What? The bill. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and that's a perfect example. India uh, uses a lot of British English. And I can imagine, Umesh, you had a hard time when you came to America. The first time, it was really challenging. But I started noticing. I was just like, you know, keeping quiet. I was listening, OK? Whenever I, I was going out for party or like lunch or dinner, I was just learning the culture. Okay, this is how they say. Okay, next time I need to remember what need, I need to say. That's great. That's great. That's the best. Way. That's how I learned Korean. Uh, real life situation. <laughs> Excellent. All right, two sixty nine is done. Any final questions? Boom. Closing. We're gonna go. Um, go ahead, Umesh. No, actually, you know, um, it's just a suggestion. Um, like, 
so since we are meeting uh, meeting for hangouts so everyone has a problem with some of the words or some of the specific letters yeah. so can we have like you know whenever we have time not today we have uh, some kind of exercise and you know everyone go through with, which, which includes like you know uh, all the words from all the um, alphabets and then we can see okay who is weak at you know which uh, alphabet um, we can uh, like and they can start working on that like I'm like slowly I'm getting to know okay I have problem with my L and now V and my R right you know so can we have uh, like uh, uh, exercise which has all the alphabets and then we can like it, it would be like good feedback from your side and for us like uh, okay now we need to know we know that okay we need to focus on we need to improve on uh, these words or uh, these uh, alphabets it's a it's a great idea uh, umesh and we've done things like that in the past but i have to say it's difficult because uh umesh the problems that you have for uh Tandok might be completely different. Uh, Tandok might have a no problem. And then Mihao might have a, a bigger problem with like the ING sound. But for Everton, the ING sound is easy because we're from all over the world. However, that's what I want you guys to bring. I want you guys to tell me the sentences you had a problem with. Also, uh, when after we're done answering questions, I'm going to have some role play, so I'm going to hear you guys actually speaking, and then if I find a big problem, I'll highlight what you need to work on too, okay? Okay. 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 Yes, and once again, that's why it's so important, everybody, to recognize something you want to ask, to find some questions. Actually, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, like when we uh, speak with – uh, U.S. Um, friends or colleagues, so they generally don't point point out. Okay, so some of them, you know, they just you know they are really close. They they say, okay, this is how you should pronounce, right? And like in 99% cases, they don't say. Right, exactly, exactly. They don't help you at all. And if you ask them, they'll say, oh no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I was thinking. Like you know, if we can have one exercise and. Uh, we go and identify the problem and uh, the uh, area of problem, and then everyone start uh, focusing on. Uh, you know, I, I definitely I agree. That everyone will have problem at uh, different spot. Nabil must have some other place, and uh, 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 Mihal has some. You know, a diff, uh, problem with some different sound. So that's what I was I, I was bringing that idea. So for in your case, um, mm -hmm. Umesh. I'll make that light L video for little and split, and we'll do that V video too. And mm -hmm. uh, and I'll make some sentences, and I'll have you, and I'll want you to practice those sentences. So next uh, next time we have a hangout, I'll want to hear those sentences. Okay? Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. This is 268. We're finishing up the last episode talking about Mackinac peaches and other silly things, and the Viking Press interview, the Plaza Hotel, George and Velvet, so many crazy situations. Lots of really good uh, vocabulary and expressions. Of course, the pronunciation is uh, always a challenge. But uh, questions on DDM 268. You guys are geniuses. A bunch of geniuses. I'm going to open up 270. This was the beginning of a new episode. And uh, don't save. Um, don't forget the Let's Talk About it Corners, too. They're always great. Uh, we started talking about cars. And this was actually a very funny joke, this last sentence. And I'm guessing Bertha might have understood this joke, but I'm guessing most people did not. Um, Bertha, did you understand this joke before I explained it or not? Of course I understood, but I um, didn't understand his pronunciation. Okay, so you did, you did recognize lemon though, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Excellent, excellent. Mihao, did you understand it? Uh, no, I, I don't know what's going on. So okay. Yep, exactly. You watched the explanation video, right? Uh, yes, yes. So now you understand? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. I have some really uh, excellent uh, students who do not live in America. None of them understood the joke. But I have two students, including Beretha. She's the second student. Two students who live in America and Canada, and they did understand it because they've lived in America for over 10 years, almost 20 years, over 20 years, um, and they were able to catch the humor. That's really wonderful. This was really difficult for people to catch, but I'm very happy that uh, Beretha and Marek, uh, the other guy was Marek, uh, they did catch the humor uh, when they yeah, watched it. But I didn't dictate um, lawyer, I mean lawyer. I, I know you wrote lawyer, but that's fine. Yeah, but it's just the pronunciation I was playing on. Yeah, and also, yeah, it is in, uh, where he said, I understood mango, and I said, what is he talking about? First cars and then mango. <laughs> ah, he's the fruit. <laughs> 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 but you figured it out anyway. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> That's great. That's, That's a new for me, mango. Absolutely. It's a, yes. And uh, we usually use it in a car accident or with song lyrics. When we listen to a song and we completely misunderstand the words, we mangle the words. Or in a car accident, the car was mangled, uh, destroyed. That's the idea. Yeah. Uh, and once again, everybody, um, the Volvo is a very good car, and the LeBaron is almost garbage. <laughs> so so com we cannot compare these two cars, and that also was very funny, that George was looking at a Volvo, and then the salesman said LeBaron is crazy, but the salesman was a genius and he was able to sell it to George. George is a true idiot. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving. Maybe boy took it to the dealer because he didn't work anymore. He changed, he traded for a new one. Maybe we're gonna find out. It's actually pretty funny. You're gonna enjoy it. Yeah. Mihao, go ahead. Yeah. I Like, not at all. Not at all. Never. Okay. Yeah, don't memorize this. <laughs> it's it's funny though, but um so in my in my situation, actually believe it or not, Mihao, many times I say this. Uh, my mom will say, Shane, can you pick me up at lunchtime? And I'll say NP. And my mom will say, What? And then I'll say, No problem. So I do the same thing as George. And my mom doesn't understand. Only I do it. So George is kind of doing the same thing. So you can do it. It's no problem, but it's not common. But he said and I, right? And I, yeah, complete connection. Yep. That's why he explained it. Yeah, but could you next time could you just put uh, spell it the right uh, way because I don't know. Well, I think a lot of students wrote this, and i not interested. Lots of people wrote that, okay? I, I wrote this. Yeah, a lot of people did, uh, and that's a good guess, but grammatically it's not proper. How do we fix the grammar? I don't know. Anybody, how can you? This sentence is grammatically incorrect. What do we need to do? And I'm not interested. Yeah, we need the I'm, that's right, and I'm not interested. And oh. it doesn't make sense, and I'm not interested, doesn't really make sense, but uh, if there was the M, then it would be it would be appropriate, but it's not. He, he clearly uh, does say N-I, but it's really tough. I do agree, it's tough and not common, not at all. Okay, and now I got it, it was in nine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if he said, and I'm not interested, no problem. Yeah. 
All right. See, I got it. Yeah, exactly. If you wrote the M, you're fine. And that's why I didn't say anything because, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. It's wrong, but it makes perfect sense. That's like this too. Um, the salesman doesn't say it's, he doesn't say the, and it has to be there. So the grammar, I agree, the grammar in this first section was kind of confusing. Later on, Jerry too leaves out uh, uh in this sentence. It has to be there, but he doesn't say it. Yeah, and also the, the salesman, uh, very tough to understand him at the end. Yeah, yeah. He's got a few more miles on the previous one. Right, right here, I can understand him. <laughs> you be believe me, you were not alone. It was tough for so many people. Yeah. So, okay, my question is, you said, uh, so we need to work in the pronunciation. And I agree with you, but I'm sorry, but they need to work in the pronunciation, not us. <laughs> Amen. I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> There's some of these guys is their pronunciation is horrible. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, I have one. Uh, the third line from the beginning. Yes, sir. That S is limited to the number we can say. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure what this related to the term limited. Okay. So, in if you see a car, and on the back of the car it says LTD, what does that mean? Yeah, limited. What is? But what does it mean? The. Uh, how to say? Limited, <laughs> constrained. Uh, but just explain it to me. So, you know, is there how how many did they make? A lot or a few? Yeah, very few. Okay, only a few. That's what it means, yeah. right? Yes. But in America, and this is a long time ago, we had a car called the Ford LTD. Okay, it's a name of a car. Actually, mm -hmm. many police cars. Uh, were LTDs, and that's what we call them, LTDs. So in every town, if you saw the police car, it was an LTD. And it was an expensive car, so lots of rich guys like bankers and doctors, they would also have LTDs. But then if you go to a certain neighborhood, it seems like everybody, everybody has an LTD. And that doesn't make sense because if it's an LTD, it should only be a few. But once again, it seems like everybody had an LTD. So it's not really LTD. It's so what what does so our definition of LTD is only a few. But what is Ford's definition? The number we can sell. So if they can sell 50, LTD means 50. If they can sell 50 million, LTD means 50 million. Uh, you mean the, the we in this sentence, it means the Ford? Yes, we is Ford. Yes, aha, there's the problem. We is Ford. But I guess the, because there are so many Ford LTD here and there, I or we cannot sell our car to the neighbors because they have already the, the Ford LTD. No. So I thought I, we, no? I see. I, yes, I understand. But no, no. In this case, uh, it's not that. Um, it's like, uh, uh, so yeah, it, it doesn't mean that. It's it, it actually means Ford as in if they can sell it, they'll make another one. So normally they make 50. But if they sell all 50, they'll make 50 more. And if they sell those, they'll make 50 more. And they'll keep making them until it's 50 million, no problem. Even though it's supposed to be LTD, they don't care. If they can sell it, they'll keep selling it. Okay. So let me, let me do this. Uh, so for DDM, I have DDM uh, VIP, right? 
and DDM VIP is limited. What does that mean? Only a Only few a students can join. Uh, why? Because it's it's uh, personal lessons. Okay, so I, I can't have too many people. Otherwise, uh, we never master anything. It's more difficult. So DDM VIP is limited. But actually, DDM VIP is expensive. Uh, the price right now is ninety dollars. So if I was uh, if I were greedy, and Francisco wanted to pay ninety dollars to join VIP, I would say sure. Now normally I only accept eight students, but Francisco says, "Oh come on, I'll give you ninety dollars." Okay, so now I have nine students, and then Umesh says, "I'll give you ninety dollars." Okay, and I have ten. And then Yuka says, I'll give you $90. Okay, and now I have 11. So is it limited? No. It just says limited, but actually it's not limited. As long as somebody pays money, I accept it. So the meaning of limited is stupid. It doesn't mean what it sh is supposed to mean. That's what he's talking about. Misused. Exactly. Misused word. Exactly. Okay, thank you. You bet. My question, okay? Yeah, go ahead, Kuni. Uh, yeah, uh, this is related to the, the American culture mm -hmm. uh, uh, about uh, cars, owing the cars. And the uh, question is, uh, hmm, yeah, college children or women can buy, uh, can buy the yeah, cheap yeah, liquid car, but uh, men, workers, yeah, salad men, should be by the yeah brand new car. Is it a oh, I would say not true at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would. Yuzuka say... is a mm -hmm. yeah, Yuzuka is a good business probably. Yeah. Yep, used car is a huge business. It depends on money. Um, I'm sorry, not not questions, money. So for me, when I was in high school, um, I bought a used car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I went to college, because uh, I was in the military before that, I, I had a military career, I actually bought a new car. Um, mm -hmm. But when I went to Korea, I bought, first of all, I bought a used car. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then later, I bought a new car. Um, okay. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. It, 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 it purely is about money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of idea is that we, uh, women, women, Drive the daily electric car. Uh, the, you mean they drive less? Yeah, yeah, and that was a sexy one act. That was what? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that beautiful woman uh, is driving a car, a very cheap or electric car. Mm. Uh, a kind of image for the um, standard Americans. It is a sexy thing, or I don't yeah. think so. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I maybe maybe it was a long time ago, but nowadays, absolutely not. Yeah, mm. um, I think uh, uh, in America, a car is not a luxury. Car is mm. a necessity. Um, mm -hmm. So even for me, um, mm. I it, it, I can't live. Uh, here without a car. Even Beretta, when she was in L.A., which is a big city, she knows you have to have a car in L.A. Is Beretta, can you imagine living in L.A. with no car? No. Impossible. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a it's a tool, and especially if you have children, it's an absolute must. You you have to have one. So then it becomes a matter of money. So if you have the money. You get a new car. If you don't, you get a used car. That's it. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Tanta. Yes. Yes, I just have a question about uh, ED Samuel. It always drives me crazy. I um, just watched your video and uh, about this and uh, they advise me, for example, like this. <laughs> advise me. Yeah, and I want to talk about the T sound. Is that really stopped? 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a, a good example. So first of all, uh, perfect pronunciation advised me. Now, uh, when we say it fast, obviously we don't say advised me. We say advised me, advised me. And that's a stop sound. You can kind of hear it, advised me, advised me. Now, we also have a Z and an M. And if, as you know, Tanduk, the Z and the M are strong sounds, right? Yes. Yes. So the faster we say it, we can actually cancel this sound. So uh, I'll give you an example. They advised me. They advised me. That's perfect. That's a stop sound. They advised me. They advised me. But if I say it even faster, they advised me not to do it. They advised me not to do it. It's completely canceled. So when we talk about cancellation, um, it, when we cancel things, we are really speaking really fast. Okay, so once again, listen carefully. They advised me to do it. They advised me to do it. They advised me to do it. Stop sound. They advised me to do it. They advised me to do it. They advised me to do it. Cancelled. Does that yes, help? I, yes, I can hear the difference. Good, 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 good. So the key is, um, that's a good question. The key is, if you can say it, you can hear it. So, you know, I, I obviously for students, I prefer they use perfect English pronunciation. However, for listening skills, I do want you to practice that too, okay? Okay, but, uh, you know, you said that uh, in your mind or in your mouth, you do say it even you speak fast, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you ask any American, did you cancel the D, every American will say, of course not. Uh, so in, in our head... We absolutely say it. There's no question. Um, but in reality, you don't hear it. Yes, but uh, I wonder because uh, people who are uneducated, they uh, speak English, but they don't um, learn the writing system. It doesn't Do they matter. Know about the D? <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean, but that's it, it's an interesting – what you're saying is interesting uh, because – uh, most Asian students, maybe Europe too, they study the grammar first and before they really study the speaking. And because of that, you guys are always focused on the grammar. You're always recognizing past tense, present tense, present continuous, da, da, da. But in America, we never think about grammar. And when you speak Vietnamese, do you think poor people think about grammar? Of course not. They just speak. Um, so it's just natural. It's the natural spoken way in every language. Education doesn't matter. Yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> it's a good point. We got a good question here. Pull out, pull off, and pull over. Pull out, pull off, pull over. Um, these are phrasal verbs, obviously. Yeah, Nabil said our school and colleges only teach grammar. Nabil, I lived in Korea for 20 years, same thing, uh, only grammar. And the teachers generally uh, spoke English very bad. Their pronunciation was bad. But American students who study Spanish and German, uh, typically the same thing. It's only grammar and vocabulary. So it's a, it's a problem. Um, it's not natural, but that's what schools do. Okay, pull out. Pull out. Uh, it depends. It depends on the situation. There can be so many different definitions. Uh, but to pull out uh, something is not seen, and you take it out. Um, to pull off. Uh, are you are you talking about in a driving situation, Beretha? What situation? Yeah, I thought it was too loud in the driving situation. Okay, so let's let's stick with driving then, because it, it it can really change in the situation. So when driving, pull out means um, get onto the uh, main road. Um, so leave the parking lot leave the local street 
uh, to the main street. That's the idea. Uh, pull off would be uh, to leave the road to the side of the road. So the police officers say, pull off the road if they stop you, and you have to park alongside the road. Uh, pull over is the same thing. Pull over um, is the same as pull off. Um, it means uh, temporarily. A police uh, pulls over, right? Yeah, exactly. Stop on the side of the road. So here, pull off, yeah, pull over, yeah, same thing. These these two are really going to be similar. Why do we say pull? Because that's what we do to the steering wheel. We have the steering wheel or the steering handle, and we actually pull it to the right or, oh, terrible pictures, or to the left. So you actually pull on the handle, uh, and that's the idea. Yeah. You see, I think on my, let's talk about it. I use pull out wrongly. Uh, I uh, should say pull off of the freeway. Um, ah, for the last one, for the driving. Yeah. So yeah. why not uh, can other students uh, correct us in case, in case we make some mistakes? So we... Um, I don't mind if you correct other people, but be careful because... Uh, you know, depending on the situation, it might be really tough. So, for example, uh, I had to pull off the road. I had to pull over. Um, those are both fine in your situation. I had to pull out would actually mean to enter the freeway, and pull off would be to leave the freeway. So I think I don't think any student would have caught that, and I wasn't listening carefully enough to catch that. So that's kind of my fault, but... Uh, yeah, but uh, that will be very helpful for us. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, for me, because well, luckily I have you right now, but other people don't have anybody. So. Oh, that's what I'm saying, you guys. Um, you you have a really huge advantage with having an English coach. So when you have these questions, you gotta ask, and don't forget on box.com type. Uh, add, uh, what is it, daily dictation, and then my name will pop up and click on my name. That way I know you leave a question. If you don't do that, I don't know you leave a question, and I might miss it. So please use me. I'm your, I'm your coach. I'm here to help. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. I think it's time for some... Uh, Reading, I want to hear you guys do some reading here. Let me uh, close this. Uh, what should I do? I think I'm going to do 269, and then maybe we'll do a little bit of Seinfeld 2. Uh, yeah, we're going to do that. So I'm going to break this into smaller sections, and I'm going to have basically one person read this section, and then the next person read this section. And we'll go section by section like that. Yeah, we need the scripts, please. Ah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, so once again, uh, I'll have one person read this section, and then the next person read the yellow section, and then we'll s move like that. Uh, ba -ba -ba and this is what we'll do. So right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 people. Um, so we'll start with this one and we'll see how it goes. Let's start with uh, Benetha, the now, the first section, and then Everton. And I'll call out the names after that, but we'll go down the list. If you look at the attendees, we'll go down the list like that. So Benetha, give us a start, please. All right. Now... I don't know about you, but I grew up in a home where we always had to remove our shoes at the front door. The house practically came to a standstill if I made it from the front door to the sofa without removing my shoes first. Great job. Everton. Now, 
while most people think the removal of footwear is a cultural thing, there are a lot of lot of health benefits to doing it. Here are four reasons why my mother was right all, all along. Great job. And Jiang, Jiang Nguyen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the first reason is best design according to a study released recently by EPA. Uh, but, but this size on loss can remain there for up to a quick. Now, not only are you tracking that into your home, but that can also cause harm to small children and your pet. Wow, you did a great job, Jiang. Much better than two weeks ago. Very happy. Good job. Marco, you're next. Oh, Marco. No, that's okay. Uh, we'll go right to Mihao. Mihao, I'm sorry. Mihao, this section, please. Um, another reason of, of that is dirt. Nobody wants to have to clean their house more than once a week. So more vacuuming, more cleaning is the result, the result of tracking dirt in from the outside. Great job. Mihao's pronunciation is very good. Let's go to Nabil. Nabil, uh, is there other students from Pakistan? I don't think so. We had one, but not right now. Nabil, this section, please. Okay. Now, also, you have to think about waste. People don't realize that animal waste and human waste is tracked in every single day, just on the bottom of your shoes. Again, not good for you your children, or even your small pets. Very nice, very nice. And Tando, next. Now, the fourth reason is, of course, comfort. Whether you work on your feet all day or you're just not wearing the proper shoes, it's important to take your shoes off. Slip into one comfy slippers and stretch those tight toes. Wow, great job, Tando, very nice. Umesh, the next one. Tandok, mute your mic, please. Thank you. Good. Yes, so the next time you come home, remember, remove your shoes at the, at the front door. If you are having guests over, a great way to encourage them to do that is to set a nice, nice shoe bank out and make it more inviting. Very good. Very good. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. uh, Excellent job. And let me go to Francisco. Finish it up here, the last two. Perhaps even put out a pair of slippers so that when they come over, not only are they welcome, they are comfortable too. For more, for more information and to see great videos like this, visit us at Facebook or online at the alternativedaily.com. Interesting. Great job. Very good, everybody. I liked it. Let me go back. We got lots of things to talk about. And Yuka and, and uh, um, Kuni, I'm going to get you guys in a second here. Let's go. Berta, really nice. Uh, I want a bit more R careful here. Uh, we always had to remove our shoes. We always had to remove our shoes. One more time, please. We always had to remove our shoes. Yeah, that was good. Stand still. Stand still. Came to a standstill. Came to a standstill. Good job. Very nice. Very I'm nice. I'm sorry. I have a quick question. Yep. Um, can we say became into a standstill? Ah, the house practically. No. Uh, we could say the house practically became still. So we could say instead of came to a standstill, we might be able to say became still, but um, not came to a standstill, not became to a standstill. No, it's the same idea, but it's it's going to be this is definitely what we'll say. And we might somebody might say something like that. Became still. OK. OK. 
This, uh, so the idea, we got the word come, which is a movement verb, and stand, yeah. which, which, these are all movement verbs, so they go together perfectly. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Let me go to Everton here. A little bit uh, shorter here, footwear. Footwear. Perfect. Removal of footwear. Removal of footwear. Great job. Cultural. Cultural. Good. And it's a uh, cult. Cultural. Excellent job. Cultural thing. Cultural, cultural thing. Great job. Look at all these lovely R's. Here are four reasons. Here are four reasons. Great job. Put it together more. Four reasons. Four, re four reasons. All along. All along. Good. And this is an A-W, all along. All along. Great job. Long. Long. I liked it. Excellent job. Very good. Very good. Let me go to Jiang, first of all. I'll take questions at the end, guys. I, I hope you have some questions. Pesticides. Hello? Hello, go ahead. Yeah. Pesticides. There you go, good. Pesticides. Pesticides. More S here and more S here. I'm looking for those S's. Pesticides. Yeah. Pest pesticides. Good job. According to a study. According to study. Very good. Pesticides on lawns. Pesticides on lawns. Very good, very good, very good. Uh, Marco just left a message. Okay, good, good. I'll talk to you in a second, Marco. Uh, once again, Jiang, you did a great job today. Very good, very good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Let me go to Mihao. Mihao, and I'm going to have to turn my speaker up here. Another reason off of that is dirt. Another reason off of that is dirt. Good. Now, your pronunciation is actually really good, but I want to talk about this word here. And off of that, when we have the word of and the next word is a consonant, we can actually cancel the V sound. And let's do that. And now we got off of that. Off of that. Can you repeat it once again? Yep. Off of that. Off of that. I like it. That, and keep that TH a little stronger. Off of that. Off of that. Another reason off of that is dirt. Another reason off of that is dirt. Great job. Vacuuming. Vacuuming. Very good. Very good. Um, read this section one more time. I want to make it bigger there. Read that section one more time, please. The result of tracking dirt in front. The result of tracking their in from the outside. There you go. Now you got it. Great job. So you you recognize tracking and in. We got to keep yeah. that together, right? Yeah. Great job. The result of tracking dirt in from the outside. One more time. The result of tracking dirt in from the outside. Excellent job. Thank you. Nabil, let me get more TH here. You have to think about waste. You have to think about waste. And it sounds like think. I don't want think. I want think. 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 <laughs> okay. I have TH videos, lots of TH videos. I want you to check out. Uh, uh, let me go find one for you. Uh, the think. Uh, very important. And especially once again. Hold on a second. YouTube. All right, here we go. YouTube video manager. Change to Coach Shane's ESL. And let's go to TH. And okay, soft and aspirated. This is the video. Learner is putting. Sorry. Uh, let me 
put this in the chat room and I want you can you see that in the chat room the link yes good I want you to watch that and work on the TH pronunciation okay okay all right good let's go here people don't realize people don't realize good and once again this is that L yes. I want a light L. People, ah, sorry, thank you, thank you, Umesh, I know what you're going to say. There we go. Uh, so once again, people don't realize, and I want a light L, the tongue between the teeth. People don't realize. People don't realize. And it sounds like your tongue is not between your teeth. People don't realize. People don't realize it's realize sounds good I want you to keep practicing on that and I'm gonna make a video and uh, I want you to check that in same thing here tracked in every single day tracked in every single day good you gotta keep this together tracked in every single day tracked in every single day the bottom the bottom Good. More TH. The bottom. The bottom. Good. Watch that video. Small pets. Small pets. I liked it. Very good. Very good. Let me go to Tanduk. Uh, whether you work on your feet all day. Nabil, mute your Whether you work on your feet all day. All Great. day. More L. All day. I liked it. Make it even more. Whether you work on your feet all day. Whether you work on your feet all day. Great job. It's important to take. It's important to take your shoes off. Great job. Really good. I'm very impressed, Tanduk. Vietnamese students have a hard time with American pronunciation, but you do really well. Yeah, I guess. I, I also, um, the pronunciation of A-L-L -L is all, you know, the fall. Exactly. It's an A W L just oops, A W L just like fall. That's right. Yes. <laughs> really good. Very good. Let me go to Umesh. The next time you come home. The next time you come home. Very good. Come home. Come home. Front door. Front door. Over. Over. Okay, so I'm looking at your O's and these uh, four words, and it sounds much better. Let's do. I'm I'm just concentrating on the O right now. Let's do it again. Come home, front door over. Come home, front door over. Good. Now it's the V, and I'm gonna make that video for you. Okay, so we yeah. can. Uh, we'll wait on that. Here again, encourage. Encourage. Very good. Be careful with the R. Don't let anything touch. Encourage. Encourage. Very good. Very good. Here we have the S and the SH. Let's put those together. And also we have the phrasal verb set out. So this all needs to be one section. So let's try it. Set a nice shoe bank out. Set a nice shoe bank out. Good. Faster. Set a nice shoe bank out. Put it together. Nice shoe bank. Set a nice shoe bank out. Yes. That's a, now, if you listen carefully, everybody, these sounds are similar. And when Umesh puts them together, we don't really hear the S, but we hear the SH. And that's what happens. That's natural. Set a nice shoe bank out. Set a nice shoe bank out. Great job. Inviting. Invite, inviting. Good. That was really good. Your V was very good. Great job. Thank you. Let me go to Francisco. Perhaps. Perhaps. Pair of slippers. Pair of slippers. Good. And just like Mihao, we can cancel the V. Para, pair of slippers. Pair of slippers. Yep. Faster. Pair of slippers. Pair of slippers. Pair of slippers. There you go. And don't say sleepers, slippers. Slippers. Good. Slippers. Okay, good. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, 
Not only are they welcome. Not only are they welcome. Good. And how do we say this word, Francisco? Comfortable. Terrible. Comfortable. <laughs> yes. Comfortable. 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 Great job. Very good. And let's listen. No, no. Great videos. Great videos. Perfect. Visit us at. Visit us at. Visit us at. Visit us at. How do you say this? Online. Good. Dot com. Everything is ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Online dot, dot com. com. Dot com. Online dot com. Online dot com. Online at the alternative daily dot com. Online at the alternative daily dot com. Great job. Great job. Okay. Everybody did really nice. I need to get Marco, Yuka, and Kuni, and I'm going to take them to DDM270. I want you guys to practice that. Uh, and which section? This is my dilemma. Yeah, we'll do this. Um, we're going to start with this section. So basically, let's have Marco, is your microphone working? Yes, excellent. Marco, I want you to be Jerry, and Yuka, I want you to be Elaine, and Kuni, I want you to be George. And let's go up to this section. Yeah, we'll start right here. We're going to use, uh, I'll make it all yellow. Okay, and let me bring this down. We'll make it one page. All right, and let's go ahead and start. So once again, uh, Marco is Jerry, Yuka is Elaine, and Cooney is George. Go for it, guys. Yuka. Oh. Hey, did you get it? The photo? No, I decided to go with an 89 Leblon. A Leblon? <laughs> <laughs> was the car. What a consumer. I'm the consumer. <laughs> All right. Seems like a strange choice. Well, maybe so. But it was good enough for Mr. John Paul. John Bite? The actor? That's right. He happened to be the previous owner of the vehicle. He bought a car because it belonged to John White? <laughs> no, no. I think yes, yes. You like the idea of telling people were driving John White's car. Alright, maybe I do. So what? <laughs> I've never ever seen him in a car. I mean, look at his movies. No cars, deliverance, canoe, midnight cowboy, boots, run away, train, run away, train. <laughs> Great job. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Let's go back here. Uh, now, Marco, as you were practicing, it got better. But let's go again. New car. New car. Good job. Did you get the Volvo? I'm sorry, Volvo. Did you get the Volvo? Did you get the Volvo? Good. Now that's what I want. Get the get the Volvo. Get the get the Volvo. Good job. And Cooney, go with an '89 LeBaron. Go with an '89 LeBron. LeBaron. No, not Lebaran. That's a country in the Middle East. <laughs> I want Leber, Leberan, Leberan. Leberan. There you go. Run, 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 Leberan. Leberan. No. <laughs> Let's do this. I like this.
I drove a LeBaron in Lebanon. I drove a LeBaron in the Babylon. The Revlon CEO drove a LeBaron in Lebanon. <laughs> the, the Revlon CEO drove the Le, Lebanon in the Babylon. <laughs> okay. Lebanon. Lebanon. I will make a video for this. This is too funny. <laughs> I have to make a special video for this, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good, Thank good you. practice. I like it. Hold up. Yeah. And Yuka also, LeBaron. LeBaron. Good. The Revlon CEO drove a LeBaron in Lebanon. The LeBaron Re CEO drove a LeBaron in Lebanon. <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's go back to Jerry's line here. Was the car. Was the car. Good. A little bit faster. Was the car. Was the car. Was the car. Was the car. I thought consumer said Volvo was the car. I thought consumer said Volvo was the car. Good. Francisco, mute your mic, please. Cooney, mute your mic. Somebody's at the door. <laughs> oh, I know, Ben. I'll be doing them all tonight. Uh, let's go to... Uh, uh, Cooney here. John Voigt. Um, Cooney's answering the door. <laughs> uh, Cooney, no problem. Just Voigt, 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 Voigt. Let's go back to uh, Everton here. You're driving. You're driving? Good. Terrible. Let's try it again. Uh, I'm sorry, not Everton. I'm sorry, Mar Marco. Sorry. You're driving. You're driving. You like the idea of telling people. Where is it? Right here. You like the oh. idea of telling people. You like the idea of telling people. You're driving John Boyd's car. You're. Oh, God. You're driving John Boyd's car. Good job. Very good. Very good. And lots of people want to say ever, but it's actually even. It's the same idea. Yuko, one more time. I've never even seen him in a car. I've never, I've never even seen him in a car. Good job. Deliverance. Deliverance. Good. That was good. I know you love L's and R's. Deliverance. I love it. <laughs> Deliverance. Great job. Runaway train, runaway train. Runaway train, runaway train. Excellent job. Excellent job. Everybody did great. You guys have given me much work to do tonight making extra videos. I'll put the videos in DDM270. Uh, I'll put them there when I make the answers video for DDM270, okay? Sure, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. I got lots of work to do. Yeah, that's the reason I don't want to give you more work. I have thank problems you. with Azure H or O, AW sound, but... Bring them next time. Bring them tomorrow. Yeah. I meet you again tomorrow. Okay. Once again, everybody, I do have another DDM Live tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. That's my time. Also tomorrow, I have Perf Live at 1 in the afternoon. So it's going to be a long day tomorrow, too. So if you're in Perf, great. If you want to join DDM Live tomorrow, excellent. And uh, thank you so much, you guys. Remember, please prepare any questions you have for DDM Live. And that's what I want to focus on. If you have a chance to join Miguel and Clive, practice the dialogues, and I still haven't hired another teacher, it's not easy finding someone good. Mm -hmm. um, hey Shane, I'm curious what window are you using? On one computer I'm using Windows 10, on another computer I'm using Windows 8.1.
So I'm using two Windows systems right now. You guys have a fantastic day or evening, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for joining. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care, Nabil. See you, Michal. Bye. See you, Jiang. See you, Everton. Good night. Take care. Take care. Have a great one. See you, Umesh. Take care, Yuka. See you, Tandok.